Dual Z on an Ender 3? Let's do it. My name's Jim and this is The Edge of Tech. So recently, I just did the printer mods direct drive upgrade on my Ender 3. There have been a lot of comments in the notes of that video saying that this is too much weight on the gantry and it could cause sagging. So I reached out to Tim at TH3D and they just released their Ender 3 Dual Z upgrade kit. Perfect timing. He sent me one over and we're going to install it today right on this Ender 3. So why would we want to do that? Well, it's going to help eliminate the X gantry sagging that people are saying that this upgrade makes. Now it's been proven that these things stock can print really, really good, but why not spend some money and make it print even better? <laughs> a couple cool things about this. It works with the standard or the pro. Uh, so you don't have to worry about which version of the Ender 3 you have. Um, it has a 90 day warranty from TH3D. If you have any issues in that 90 day warranty, they'll hook you up. All you got to do is contact them and say, Hey, I got this from you and this is what's going on. Enough talk. Let's get this package opened up and let's see what's inside. So as you can see, it all comes very nicely sealed in this uh, plastic, which is really cool to see uh, from TH3D. They got a new machine. It can seal everything and that looks really professional. Okay. So in the package, you should get everything you see here. There should be uh, four M4 screws with T-nuts for the bearings, and those are actually already installed in here, and those are for the bearing blocks. Not to mention the two bearing blocks right here um, with the bearings pre-installed, which is pretty cool. Two M3 screws with T-nuts and washers for the belt of pulley right here. Then you get uh, three M5 spacers and three M5 screws uh, for the gantry bracket wheels. You also get a, a tensioner bracket right here with a tensioner pulley. You also get another uh, M8 pulley. You also get the Z-Rod, the belt, and an all metal dual Z bracket that already has the brass nut and uh, the two M3 screws in there. So that's everything you get in the package. Let's get to the install. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and make sure that your filament is removed from the machine. I just went ahead and cut mine. Um, you can heat it up and pull it out as well if you wanna do that. Uh, so make sure the filament's removed. We need to relocate our power supply here. I'm going to set mine on the desk next to it for now, but I'm also, uh, during the first print, going to print the relocation file. And there's a bunch of files right on the page uh, of the instructions on this. So you can actually go link them and you can print a file that moves this over for you and then it's attached still, but it's over here. For me today, I'm going to go ahead and remove these two screws with the Allen wrench that came with the kit. And then I'm gonna set my power supply right on the side here. When you do take the power supply off, you wanna make sure your X gantry is all the way up as well. Now go to your left gantry where we're gonna add the new dual Z2 and we're gonna remove these two wheels. To do that, there is a nut on the back. Go ahead and hold that with a vice grips or a pliers or a wrench, whatever you have. And then take your supplied Allen wrench and take these two wheels off. Now we have these two wheels removed and I did use the small end of my double-sided wrench to get those off. Please note that we are gonna use everything again except for this bolt. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove these two bolts and that'll release the left carriage here right off the X gantry. Now you wanna hold it when you get this last bolt because as soon as you do, this is gonna be free and it'll come off. Now that we have this plate removed, remove this wheel the same way you did the other two. Remember, we're going to save all the parts except for the bolt. Something to note that this last wheel is the eccentric nut. Now what we're going to do is put this carriage back together. The first step in that would be putting our eccentric nut and wheel back on. What we need to do that is a, one of the longer bolts that came in the kit, one of the spacers that came in the kit, the existing eccentric nut, the wheel, and the washer. So take your new bolt and put the washer on there. Then take this and push the bolt in through the back side so it looks like that. Now if you look at it like this, it kind of looks like a J and that's how we need it. 
So the eccentric nut is next, and we're gonna put the flange side in, like this, then your wheel, then a spacer, and then what we need is we need to take the other gantry and put it in the second hold down, just like we did on the first one, like that. So what we have here before I tighten it is we have our screw going through with the washer on this side, then your eccentric nut with the flange in, then your wheel, then a spacer that came with the dual Z kit, and then your lock washer. Tighten it in, but not extremely tight right now uh, because the wheel still needs to move and we wanna put the other wheels in and get it straightened. So now I have it snug, but not all the way tight. And you can see this is what it looks like. Uh, tab here for your new uh, Z rod, your eccentric nut up here. And what we're gonna do next is reattach this to the frame. So take the piece we just put together and slide it right behind. Now in this side, just like it came off and just like we put it together, there's a little divot in the frame for that screw and make sure that screw sits in that divot. Now take the two bolts that came out of the frame originally to remove the frame piece and put them in. Something to note about these two bolts, you wanna get them uh, snug, but do not over tighten them. Uh, we're actually going to be adjusting the X-Gantry and you wanna be able to do that um, a little bit with those bolts. Next thing you want to do is just slide that down just a hair like this on one side and we're going to reattach these two wheels and by moving that down a little bit it actually makes it easier to put the wheels in. Now we need to reinstall these two wheels. First we're going to start with the bolt, then we're going to take the spacer that came with the printer, then the wheel, then the new spacer that came with the kit, and we're gonna do both wheels like that. So line that bolt up, push the, or line this bracket up slowly and then push your bolts through. And we're gonna take the last two lock washers and install them on this side. Take your wrench, vice grips, or whatever you're using for the lock washers and then your Allen wrench and tighten these up, but do not over tighten them. These wheels still need to move and slide up and down. Now we wanna look at the bracket and the X gantry and just make sure they're flush together and they're level here. If they're not, that means your X gantry actually could be crooked up or down. So just make sure that when you put this together, it's all flush and level. If you didn't have that, go ahead and loosen these two bolts just a little bit, make them flush and level and tighten those bolts back in. Next, we wanna adjust these two bolts right here just to assure that this is just a little loose so the Z rod can slide through it fine. Now, when I got mine, I noticed that the brass was actually on top, which is upside down. I took it off, I put the brass through the bottom, and I put my screws back in. Now, we're just going to take our Allen wrench, and it's tight right now, and we're gonna loosen it one full turn. You see how that's a little loose, so it'll the Z-Rod will travel through there. We might tighten that a half a turn later, but right now, I like that. Now, pop the end cap off, if you have one, grab one of the bearing blocks here. Make sure your T-nuts are loose, turn them so they're flush and flat, and put them in. Now, the bearing should be up in the top here. Take an Allen wrench and spin those kind of quickly, and those T-nuts should lock on. So I did not tighten it yet, but it's in there and the T-nuts are locked in. Now with that bearing block installed, what we wanna do is go ahead and lower our X gantry. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it with my thumb here. We wanna find something like this mini roll of filament here uh, that I got with the under five to put underneath the X gantry because what we're gonna do is loosen the top screw here of our grub screw and we're gonna take the factory or the stock Z-rod out and we're gonna use it on this side. Uh, so we, what we need is something to hold uh, your X gantry from crashing. And you want to be very careful because you don't want that to happen. Next, loosen the top grub screw. Then remove the existing Z-rod. Push it down through the bearing block that we just installed. And then screw it down into this carriage right here. Now that it's pushed in, what we want to do is make sure this bearing block is straight and, and your Z-rod is straight up and down and tighten it in. It will hang over the edge just slightly when it's perfectly straight. Now grab the pulley that came with the kit and set it on top of that Z-screw and lower your 
Z screw on this side just so it's flush with the top of your new pulley. Just about like that. Tighten the two grub screws in. Now we have the two grub screws tightened, the Z rod here, it's flush with the top of the pulley and that's gonna hold it so it doesn't fall anymore. Something to note, there is a grub screw locked right in here. What it does is it keeps the bearing in the block. If your bearing pushes out, press it back in and go ahead and tighten this grub screw here. Now grab the other bearing block just like we did before and we're gonna install it on the right side. So pull that cap off the right side, uh, get your grub screws ready just like we did before, slide them in, use your Allen wrench here to spin them kind of quickly and they'll lock themselves in. It will overhang just a little bit like we did with the other one. With this just a little loose, take the new Z-Rod that came with the kit and push it down through. Now it should slide nicely. You want to screw it down into the carriage here. As long as it's straight, as you see, it'll actually slide right down. Make sure it's nice and bottomed out. Maybe raise your gantry up and then as you set it back down, this Z-Rod will come down. As you set it back down, you'll hear it bottom out. Take your Allen wrench, tighten the top um, of the grub screw here, and then double check the bottom to make sure that one's tight. Now take the other pulley and set it on top of the other lead screw and tighten in your grub screws just like we did before. Do not over tighten though. You don't want to strip the pulley out. Now take the included belt, make sure it is uh, all untangled and straight and the teeth are on the inside and put it over these two pulleys. So take the tensioner that came with it and install the two T-nuts in and you want to make sure that the washer is on the top. And we're going to set that in the extrusion here and uh, we want to leave them loose right now. So it should be roughly in the front, in the, in the center and it should face the front of the machine. Spin those in and and make sure that that now locks into place. I'm just gonna make sure that stays, but I'm not gonna tighten it too much and make sure that the pulley is facing the front of this machine. So this is the front of the machine now. So I removed my spool holder so you guys could see this. Throw your belt around that pulley, just like this. Now you should have what looks like a triangle with your belt going around all three pulleys. So I zoomed in a little bit and as you can see, we have our triangle. Now this is your belt tensioner here. And what we need to do is tension the belt um, by pulling this forward and back. So we're going to pull this forward so the belt is you tight as you can see here. Um, not overly tight, but tight enough, just like any of your other belts there. Just make sure there's not a ton of slack in it. Once it's pulled tight and your belt is tight, tighten down the two back bolts that hold it in here and you should be good. Now keep in mind, I did take off the filament holder. Um, it usually sits right here. I'm gonna put that back on um, either over here or over here. If this is in the way, you can actually slide it one way or another to get it out of the way of that filament holder if you wanna use it. Next, what we wanna do is make sure that these are not binding. And you can do that by moving this up and seeing how difficult it is. Now it's gonna be a little bit harder or a little bit different because now you're, you're pulling the, uh, the second Z-Rod here. But if, you, if it's really too difficult and you're binding, what we need to do is take your Allen wrench, go ahead, loosen up the two screws in there and that'll adjust this here. So I would suggest going all the way up and then all the way back down with this one at least loose. Um, I loosened them both and I went all the way up and then all the way back down and now I'm spinning very freely and very easily. When I got that nice free motion, I held the block in place and I tightened them in and that's how you stop the Z wobble which was the next step. Now once you made sure your Z wobble is gone with both of the screws, you want to flip the printer back around and we need to check the level on the X gantry. You can do this multiple ways. You can print uh, level blocks and there are some uh, files in Tim's instructions to do that if you want to. Um, we do the X gantry rework. If you follow the steps in that, I'll link it below. Um, everything should be dang near awesome for you. Um, now, what I believe is uh, what Luke Hatfield teaches, 
And what we need to do is just measure both sides. And we're gonna, we need to actually level your X gantry to your frame, not to your bed, but to your frame. And to do that, we wanna make sure both sides are within one millimeter of each other. And just for the heck of it, I would, when I put this back together, just doing this enough times, if you watched any of my videos, I um, was watching this. So I'm gonna go up to 80 millimeters on this side. I'm gonna click over here and I have right under 81 millimeters. So I am, man, I am dead close to being almost dead on. So I have 80 millimeters here. And if I come over here, I have about 80 and a half. It's, it's so close to 80, right between 80 and 81, which is perfect because we only need a one, we only want a one millimeter difference on both sides. So you can follow Tim's instructions um, with the leveling blocks if you want, or you can use um, the X gantry rework. Just make sure your X gantry is perfectly level to the frame, not to your bed, but to the frame. And when you're done, if you have a ruler, uh, you want it within one millimeter on each side. That's how you know you're good. All right, so that's it. We have successfully installed the TH3D Dual Z Upgrade Kit on my Ender 3. Once you get the Z rods not binding, spend some time and do that. Uh, make sure they're not binding at all and that everything is nice and, and moves nice. Number two, make sure that your X gantry is level. Print the leveling blocks before if you want. Um, follow my X gantry rework uh, from Luke Hatfield in the videos before. Either way, just make sure it's level like we talked about before. Next thing we need to talk about is the eccentric nut and this carriage on this side here. Um, you need to make sure that that's rolling very nicely before you put it together. I was following uh, the steps and I'm gonna make the recommendation to Tim to throw it in the steps right before you attach it to um, the frame here, I think we should put the wheels on and then check, you know, that it rolls nice and then attach it to your X gantry. But what I did was I just adjusted the X gantry and tested the wheels. So when you adjust them, you should adjust it so all the wheels are tight, um, but not too tight and enough to turn it with your fingers still. If they're too tight, and you can't turn it with your fingers. That's way too tight. You need to back them off a little bit. If they're way too loose and they just spin, that's too loose. So just make sure the eccentric nut is good on this carriage and it's rolling nicely. That's gonna help everything travel much better. Now what we're gonna do is turn it on and we're gonna do an auto home just to see if everything's working okay and make sure it goes up and down by itself. So we'll go to prepare auto home and we'll let it do its thing. Everything is going like it should. The belt is turning and it's turning uh, both sides of the gantry, which is awesome. And we've homed. So that's pretty cool. So everything is working as it should. We've successfully installed the Dual Z upgrade kit like we talked about, and I think we're good to go. Uh, especially if you have the direct drive printer mods upgrade, this is probably a really good thing to do just to give yourself a little bit of assurance on that uh, left side, or if you're looking at the printer on the right side of that gantry so it's not going up and down by itself. Well, I hope you learned something today, and as always, keep printing. Hey everybody. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this upgrade. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button below if you want to see more and then the bell right over here if you want to see the next great video that comes out. We look forward to seeing you soon. Later.